which are going to happen or whatever was important for God. Um, so we prayed for uh, since a couple of nights for it. What happened uh, yesterday morning um, was this. I did not receive a dream. Sometimes I do receive a dream when something happened, but not this time. But I woke up. I was um, fully awakened. I was not even tired when I woke up. And I heard the Holy Spirit ask me um, very intensely, but also very soft at the same time. And he was asking, what time is it? So I was looking on my phone. And at that time, when I was looking on my phone, it was 2.44 in the morning. Um, and I said, it's 2.44. And um, then I heard very clearly, m more like a thought, but it was very crisp and clear, the name Christian Bale, like the actor Christian Bale. And that was it. And then I fell asleep again. When I woke up the next morning at five o'clock, this is my time, this is good to wake up early. Um, I had that passage from Revelations 18 verse 8 in my head and this was um, for strong is the Lord God who judges her this is a judgment of the great whore of Babylon it's a judgment God is going to judge Babylon so this Bible verse was in my head when I woke up um, so, of course, I was curious, what does that mean? What did God want to tell me? And what did he want to know uh, us to understand? So I was going to uh, Google and I typed in 2 colon 44, like it was written on my phone. Nothing else, no reference to the Bible or to anything Christian just two colon 44 and uh, interesting the first link which came up was Daniel 2 verse 44 I want to read what is written there and in the days of these kings the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. It shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. This is that, that um, those kingdoms shall be broken in pieces by God. It's a judgment of Babylon. This is exactly the words which in my head and this was exactly the same passage which came up when I when I was typing in 2.44 at uh, Google. But then I did some uh, more, a little bit more research and I found out there are exactly six passages in the whole Bible which has a chapter 2.44 and I will read all of them for you. Um, this is 1 Kings 2.44. He has written, The king said moreover to Shemai, you know, as your heart acknowledges, all the wickedness that you did to my father David. Therefore, the Lord will return your wickedness on your own head. When the Bible speaks about the coming Messiah, which we Christians know it's Jesus, then, he very, then the Bible very often says, David shall sit on the throne forever, and we know Jesus shall sit on the throne forever, right? So when he has written, therefore the Lord will return your wickedness on your own head, because um, for all the wickedness that you did to my father David, when we sin, we do not sin only against ourselves or against other people, but every sin we command, commit is sin against Jesus, against God. Um, so 
this whore of Babylon, which is going to be judged by God, has committed a lot of sins. This is the reason why she will be judged, right? The next two passages I'm going to read are from Ezra and from First Chronicles. And both of them uh, contain only names, but I think, think um, the translation of those names also fit very good in the whole concept of what I'm talking to, you know. I will go with Ezra first, if I find him, here we go, 244. And there's written, the sons of Keros, the sons of Ceha. And the sons of Paden. That is a whole. Um, that's a whole verse. And the the translation of those names is Keros means ankle. When I think about ankle, when I think about um, when I think about uh, Genesis, this is a first prophecy about the Messiah, right? And I want to read to you. Because you have done this, you are cursed more than any, than all cattle and more than every beast of the field. God speaking to Satan, to the snake. On your belly you shall go and you shall eat dust all the days of your lies, life. Your yeah, lies. Uh, uh, all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. And he, Jesus, shall bruise your head. And you shall bruise his heel. And then you have the second name, which means Sia or Siaiha, and means departing, maybe up to heaven, who knows. And the last name was Pardon, which means ransom. Jesus has become, or his blood has become our ransom. He has washed away all that stood against us. And uh, if you want to receive that, of course. And uh, he has ransomed our guilt with his precious blood, right? And then we have the last passage in the Old Testament, which is in First Chronicles. And uh, again, these are names. We have Shema, we got Rahem, the father of your Koam, and Rechem, we got Shammai. And I think this is also very interesting in the connection with what I just read. Shema, the, the name means to hear. Uh, in Matthew 24, Jesus says, who has an ear, like a spiritual ear, let him hear. Right? Um, then we have the name Raham, means belly. Um, so I'm not sure how that fits into that, but the next name is your koem, which means the people empty. And then we have Rekem, and his name means variation. And the variation, I will show you a picture what that means. It's basically you have a leaf from a plant which has uh, different colors. Like there's a fading of colors or the one part of the leaf is dark green while the other one part is, uh, is uh, light green or so. This is variation. I checked that up because I wanted to know. And the last uh, name is Shamai. And Shamai means desolate. And I think this is very interesting in the connection with with the name of um, Christian Baal, because there you have a variation in those two words, Christian and Baal. Um, the word or the name Christian means basically follower of Christ. You are a Christian, you are a follower of Christ, right? And the word Baal, and this is very, very interesting, means when you look up the word on Merriam-Webster dictionary, the first entry which comes up means great evil. When I think of variation, 
and uh, the different colors of the leaf, then I think about what um, what Jesus says. He makes the dep uh, um, he makes the difference between goats and sheep. He makes the difference between uh, chaff and wheat. He will separate, and this is for the church. This is not the world versus the church. But uh, when you read Revelations 14, you have two two types of ha a harvest. You have the harvest of grain, of wheat, and you have the harvest of wine, of the, the fruits of the wine, right? The one harvest is a church, the other harvest is a world. But Jesus says he makes a distinction between chaff and between wheat. He will let them grow up together and when it's fully grown, then he will separate. Okay? And you and I, we decide where we want to belong to. The chaff, the worthless chaff, or the good wheat which bears fruit. Right? So let's go further. Let's start with Luke. Luke 2.44 So important with that connection if you want to be part of that chaff or of that wheat. When Jesus at the end will come, when he uh, says he will separate the sheep from the goats, both of them will say, but have we not in your name, have we not, have we not, have we not. And to the goats he will say, I don't know you. Right? And listen what is written in Luke 2.44. But supposing him to have been in the company, this was Mary and Joseph, the parents of Jesus, they supposed that Jesus was in the company, they went a day's journey and sought him among their relative and acquaintances. They sought him. What is our first calling as Christians? To seek him. To be in our secret place, in our upper room, and to seek him. To pray, to worship, to study his word, to get to know him, right? This is our first duty, our first calling. Alright? The next is in Acts 2.44. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common. If you think about... Uh, so I was searching, researching on Christian Bale, the actor. <clears throat> and uh, his full name actually is... Christian Charles Philip Bale. And the interesting thing is, um, it means follower of Christ, Christian, right? The the um, the name Charles comes from Karl. It's a German name, Karl. It means full grown man. But uh, Charles also means free man, right? So when we are followers of Christ, the Son of Man, who the Son of Man makes free, he is free indeed. From what? From sin, from slavery of sin. That is, uh, that is what he makes us free from. Addictions and uh, this kind of stuff. There are so many testimonies from people who have delivered from all kinds of stuff. So, when we become truly born again, he makes us free. The word, uh, the name Philip, uh, means lover of, of horses, but it also means warlike. And I think this is very interesting <clears throat> if you, if you um, read Ephesians 6, I believe, there's written the whole armor of God, put on the whole armor of God. If every Christian in the world puts on the whole armor of God, what do we have? An army. So warlike, on horses, 
is very interesting when you think about the church age <clears throat> you have christians and you can read in the book of acts at that point they were first time called christians right so in the beginning of the church age the followers of christ and at the end of the um, of the church age is coming something which will be very horrible for the people of god who do compromises Paul in 2 Thessalonians speaks about the man of sin as the son of perdition. As I said before, the name Baal means great evil. And um, I want to read that for you. I think this is very important. Go to 2 Thessalonians 2. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together with him, and the word gathering here, is very interesting let no one deceive you by any means for the day the day of christ will not come unless the falling away comes first the falling away comes first this is the people of god falling away from the face and you see that already um, there are worship leaders, there are pastors, there are all kinds of people who say I'm not a Christian anymore, I cannot live as a Christian, I don't know what that means. But this is not the whole story. There are also people who compromise, um, especially leaders will have a very hard time if they do not repent from the sexual sins. And there are many Christian leaders out there who have exactly that that a problem with sexual sins but also other kinds of uh, sins they allow all kinds of evil in their churches money has become more important than jesus um, and jesus says very clearly you cannot have you cannot you cannot serve mom and, and god either or and the bible is also very clear when it comes to idolatry if mom and becomes your idol then uh, Jesus is not your Lord. And uh, if you do not repent, you will have no part with him. And these are all things which are going on in the body of Christ right now. Okay. So the falling away does not necessarily mean only to be completely away from Christ, but, but uh, to have two masters. Let no one deceive you by any means for the day will not come unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed the son of perdition this is the one we call antichrist who opposes and exalts above all that is called god or that is worshipped so that he sits as god in the temple of god showing himself that he is god and uh, the word himself here is very important this is a big big thing in our in the season and in the time we are living in everybody is busy with themselves uh, antichrist will be the greatest egomaniac in the world because uh, he wants to establish his dreams and he doesn't care about anybody else but himself and satan will give him all his power Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? And now you know what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time. He who restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs and lying wonders and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because this is very important, this one sentence here, listen and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth but they that they might be saved 
they did not receive the love of the truth. I want to go for another translation here. I will read from the ESV now, so there, there it is uh, written a little bit differently and uh, more understandable, I believe. The coming of the lawless one is by the activity of Satan with all power and false signs and wonders and with all wicked deception <coughs> for those who are perishing, and this now is very important, because they refused to love the truth and so be saved. Therefore God sends them a strong delusion so that they may believe what is false in order that all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in un unrighteousness. So what I see here is those who perish, they knew the truth. But they did not have love for the truth. They did not have love for Jesus, but they had love for TV. They had love for their hobby. They spent time with the hobby. They thought one, one hour on Sunday is enough for the rest of the week. Um, and and uh, if we go back here to what we read about um, 2.44, Seek Jesus, right? This is an important thing here. Seek him. Have love for him. Get to know him. Because at the end of the age he will tell to the goats, I never knew you. Okay, the name of Baal means great evil first, but it means woe, sorrow. Be careful, woe to you. Not because he wants that you are, uh, that you receive those woes or whatever, but that you return and repent. <clears throat> and um, I was reading in the beginning about the gathering together with Jesus. And the word Baal also means large bundle of goods. A large bundle of goods, a large bundle is gathered together. In the field it means baling hay, putting together hay. And I think this is very interesting. And you see the, the difference here between, yeah exactly what I said, between goats and sheep, between wheat and chaff. He makes the difference when he gathers together his, the church, he makes the difference between the sheep and the goat. And you want to be part of the sheep. If you want to be a goat, you shouldn't be in church at all. Then you should, uh, you should enjoy the little bit of life you have left and uh, do whatever you want. <clears throat> but if you want to be a child of God, then you should go fully for God. I wish you were hot or cold, but you were just lukewarm. If you, if you, uh, somebody said the word hot or cold means hot like a hot coffee or cold like a ice cold Coke, which is good if you drink it, right? But nobody likes a lukewarm Coke and nobody likes a lukewarm coffee. I wish you have been hot or cold, but you have been lukewarm. And when I say that, I also need to look into the mirror and look at myself and see and uh, find out where do I stand, right? I'm, I'm, I'm a sinner like everybody else. But what am I doing with my sin? This is a big thing. Do I hide it? Or do I, do I give it to God and go to the person who it concerned, right? <clears throat> what am I doing with my sin? Am I lukewarm or am I hot or cold? Okay, <laughs> this is a question we all can ask, but I want to go a little bit further with the number 244. <clears throat> um, there are many, 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 many prophecies out there for the USA. 
for the year 2020, but also for the rest of the world. I think, um, yeah, there were so many people who had uh, visions and dreams about waves are coming. And I will link uh, one of those videos which I put together um, where where pe different kind of people and prophets uh, um, explain what they have seen. <clears throat> and I will link that either up here, somewhere up here, or down in the description. Uh, you will see, that you can watch that video if you want. Um, so I was checking a little bit more for the for the for the number two forty four <clears throat> or two hundred forty four, and there's some very interesting interesting uh, things came up. So I was looking for the year two forty four after Christ or before Christ. I didn't find much interesting there. But while I was searching on Google, I found something very, very interesting. The year 2020 is the 244th birthday of the USA. Okay. So what is happening this year? You can see in that video I was talking about. Things are going to come to the USA. Things are coming to the rest of the world. But I think... <clears throat> The USA is especially highlighted for 2020. And the last thing I want to say, if you, Christian Bale, should ever watch this video, there's still time for you to repent. There's still time for you to be part of the kingdom of God. If that, uh, everything what I said speaks to you in any way, you can repent, you can be part of the kingdom of God, but it's your decision. You see Kanye West, he's not very well right now, but he made that decision. And there are many other people out there, famous people who did make that decision to follow Christ instead of Satan. Instead of that, that uh, pleasure of this world, which, which uh, looks good for us here right now, but which uh, will come to nothing. When we die, we cannot bring anything. We cannot bring our riches or whatever we have. Nothing. We will stand in front of God and he will judge us according to what we have done here on earth. So if you watch that, you can repent. There's time for you to come back to Christ. So this is everything that I have to say for this video. This was a lot. Goodbye and God bless you all.